Hey guys, it's Mr. G. Have you ever wondered how a robot vacuum knows how to move or where to go next? Or maybe what to do when it's stuck or how to get back on its charger? Or perhaps you've wondered how a self-driving car can avoid an accident that a human would most likely not avoid. The answer? Knowledge. Algorithms. Algorithms control many, if not all, of the devices that we use on an everyday basis. Even we have our own built-in algorithms programmed in our DNA. But that's another story for another day. In Unit 5, we're going to try to create logical algorithmic solutions for each of the problems that we'll see. This is not any different from the previous algorithms that we've written, but what is different is how we're going to analyze our algorithms, because we haven't done that yet. We're going to analyze our algorithms to see if they make sense and to see if they're optimal ways of solving a problem. By analyzing our algorithms, we could also see how efficient they are, and we could also check to see how long they run for and see how long it takes them to accomplish a specific task. We're going to focus on Big Idea 4 from the AP Computer Science Principles Curriculum Framework. By the end of this unit, we want to be able to answer these questions. How are algorithms implemented and executed on computers and computational devices? Why are some languages better than others when used to implement algorithms? What kinds of problems are easy, what kinds are difficult, and what kinds are impossible to solve algorithmically? Lastly, we want to be able to answer how are algorithms evaluated. Let's get started with Unit 5, Lab 1, Page 1, Searching a Sorted List. Now, I'm not going to lie, I really can't help myself and I really want to make this video and put it out there to help you guys. I know some teachers might get upset, but I'm not going to give you guys like the best algorithm or show you how to code the correct algorithm. That's up to you and your partners to come up with. I'm going to show you guys how to get started creating your own algorithm. Okay, so for number four with your partner, you have to build your own strategy or an algorithm that implements your strategy that the computer will then use to guess the number. And then you have to act like the computer in unit two and tell the computer if their guess was too low or it was too high or if it was just right. You'll notice that it also shows you that you should keep track of the number of guesses. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to implement that first. So we're going to get rid of number guessing game because that's not what we're creating here. And I'm going to first create, I'm going to make a block and name it computer guesses my number from, and then I'm going to go from low to high. I'm going to use these percentages because it allows me to create the input as I make the block. Okay. And if I want to be actually a little bit more correct, I actually can set that this number or that this value, that this input should be a number. So in case someone types in something else like a letter or a character or like, I don't know, whatever, it, uh, it will throw an error if uh, it's not a number. So great, so we have our block here. We're gonna have to use this at some point. Where is it? There we go. We're gonna have to use this at some point and I wanna keep track of the number of guesses first. So I'm gonna create an, a global variable called numGuesses and I'm going to set that equal to zero when the game starts. There we go. And numGuesses should really increase every single time that someone makes a guess and they're incorrect. So what I'm going to need to do is actually bring in three sprites because in the lab it shows us three sprites that the user will click to tell the computer if, if its guess was too high, too low, or just right. So there are the three sprites that I'm going to use. This one's going to be too high, this one's going to be yay, and this one's going to be too low. So I've already gone ahead and, oh, what did I do? I didn't correctly put the pictures in. That's fine. So I'm going to bring in the pictures to the correct sprites, and I'm going to make sure that they're all arranged in the correct direction. Okay, perfect. So the computer is going to make a guess, and I'm going to click too low, too high, and yay, if the, if the computer guess is right. Okay, every single time I click too low or too high, I should increase the number of the guesses. So let's, let me actually do that. Let me implement that in the script area. So every single time I click too low, I'm going to change the number of guesses by one. And same thing when I click too high. We're going to change the number of guesses by one. Going back to our gray sprite or our original sprite, uh, set number of guesses to zero, and there we go. 
So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to think back to a previous lab that I did. I'm going to start using broadcasts to kind of tell all the sprites what's going on throughout the entire program. So when I start the game, I'm going to broadcast. I'm going to broadcast. Uh, keep guessing, let's say. Keep guessing. And I'm going to use keep guessing because that's actually what I'm going to have um, my two low and two high blocks broadcast right after they change the number of guesses. So they're going to keep tell the sprites to all keep guessing. And only one of them is really going to receive the the message which is the gray sprite. So when I receive keep guessing, I want to do this actual block. So when I receive keep guessing, I want my computer to guess from let's say 0 to 60. Now I probably don't want to hard code my values to guess from here to here because as the too high and too low blocks broadcast whether it was too high or too low I'm gonna to want to change what I'm guessing from the numbers I'm guessing between so I actually want to keep track of that with global variables even though I know I've like said before that global variables are bad it kind of they're kind of easy to use in small programs so I'm gonna make a variable and I'm gonna call it a uh, global low and I'm going to call my next one global high. Okay. So I'm going to set global low to, let's say, zero. And I'm going to set global high to 60, let's say. And then instead of hard coding it, I am going to actually just drag in the variable, the variables right here. So this is good because now I can manipulate the global low and the global high from the two low and two high sprites because they're global variables, so every sprite has access to them. Okay, now here's what I should think of. If, if I click too low, that means that the global low should now be set to whatever too low is. Okay, now let me actually think of how I should do this. Actually, right now it wouldn't even do anything if I click it, so I really should implement some kind of a control block or some kind of hat block over here so that when the too low button is clicked, it changes the number of guesses by one, it broadcasts keep guessing, and also I should really set the new, um, I should set the global low to something over here. This I'm going to have to change at some point because it doesn't make sense for the, for the global low to, to remain at zero. I have to change it. If it's too low, this should be the lowest number I guess in this block. Okay, so actually I'm going to implement uh, computer guesses my number from low to high. I'm going to implement it right now. So I am going to create a guess that every sprite can hear or can listen if I broadcast it or if it gets changed, I guess. Um, so I'm going to make a variable and call it guess. And my computer is going to guess, let's see, let's set guess to um, let's see, what do we want to do this? So we're going to set guess when the, when the thing is clicked, we're going to set guess to, let's just say, actually, this is a really good place where I can like, you know, kind of pick a random number between low and high. Now that's probably not the best strategy. Um, and I could always actually start with low and then just increment one by one, which is not a really good way of doing it. But let me just set the guess to a random number between low and high. Okay, so guess is going to be a random number. And then I want to ask the user, or maybe the computer is going to, once it picks a number, it has to say, hey, uh, user, um, is, like, is the number whatever. So actually, let me implement that right now. So let's use a join block and let's have the computer ask the user um, say, actually I should put that in the join block, is your secret number, and I'm going to make that equal to guess. And I'm going to add a question mark at the end. So is your secret number guess, that's what the computer is going to do, or it's going to say, and then the user will click uh, too high, too low, or just right, I guess. So let me apply that, let me hit OK. And I have to initialize it. Right now, like nothing's really initialized because if you look at global high, it says that it's zero. So if I don't click on the 
the green flag, all the numbers won't get initialized and the game won't really work. So let me initialize it. There we go. And my computer, my, my thing's already guessing. Um, is your secret number 22? So if I hit too low, it should, because of the code that I put inside of too low, actually, I didn't put any code inside of too low, did I? I didn't put the code, I didn't reset the global low. If, if the number is too low, the global low should now become the guess. Yeah, I, I almost forgot to do that. So if the number is too low, then whatever the person just guessed should be the lowest number that it guesses next. So let me make sure that I do the same thing for too high. For too high, if I click on too high, when I'm clicked, I want to change the number of guesses by one. So that's going to increment the number of guesses. But I also want to set the global high to the guess. So that way, that way when I go back to my gray block over here, when my computer guesses again, because it's going to receive this broadcast, keep guessing, all right, the last thing I do in too low and too high is to, is to broadcast keep guessing, and only this gray block is going to receive keep guessing, and it, when it receives that, it's going to keep guessing. All right, so it's going to use this algorithm, or this, I mean, it's not a great algorithm because I'm just guessing randomly, I guess, but it's, it's probably, it might work. It might not be too bad. Um, a worse algorithm might be to go in order from one to two to three to four to five, an even worse algorithm would be to guess the same number twice. So I guess it can't be too bad. Um, so let's see, let me hit the green flag. Is your secret number 56? Oh, I probably should have come up with a secret number first. Let's pretend our secret number is 21. So that is that 56 is way too high. So I'm gonna hit too high. And is your secret number 13? That is going to be too low uh, because our secret number is 21. I just wanna make sure that it doesn't um, guess like, you know, if I say it's too low, it doesn't guess an even lower number. Is your secret number 14? That's still too low. Is your secret number 49? It kind of looks like we're getting closer to the answer. Is your secret number 43? That's still way too high. 27 is still too high. 20 is too low. 24 is too high. 22 is too high. Oh, I guess 20 again. Um, oh, maybe because when we said too low, then Oh, maybe it's inclusive. So that could be a bug. That could be something we should look at um, because we already said that 20 was too low and now it's guessing 20 again. And that's probably because it set the lowest number to 20. And I mean, when it guesses between 20 and something else, it could still guess 20. So that's actually what happened. So we gotta be careful. That's something I'm gonna leave up to you guys to figure out or make sure that when it guesses again, it doesn't pick the same number as the uh, the limiting number, like the, the upper or lower bounds. Um, I'm gonna say too low and secret number 21, yay. So that's how I, that's one way to implement an algorithm. Now this is not an optimal or the most efficient or the most or the best algorithm to guess around randomly, but this is kind of like a starting point. So you guys can see um, how, to, how to start implementing your own algorithms. You're gonna wanna do that here in computer guesses and that's where you're gonna come up with your own strategy with your partners and everything else, the too low, yay, and too high. Actually, I didn't even do the yay. So if I click yay, uh, when I am clicked, maybe I should broadcast, uh, we got a winner, winner. And the gray block, when it receives winner, when I receive winner, it's gonna say, uh, you won the game. You won the game bro. And um, hopefully that helps. 